come to church online.
shut your eyes and speak in the Holy Ghost in this place. Switch, switch, switch to the language of the Spirit. Switch, switch to the language of the Spirit. Switch, switch to the language of the Spirit. For God is a Spirit and they that must worship must worship in spirit and in truth. The message translation says, engage your spirit in worship. Engage your spirit in worship. Engage your spirit in worship. This is not a time to look at me. This is not a time to look around. Engage your spirit in worship. In this place, engage your spirit in worship. In this place, engage your spirit in worship. In this place, I'm still waiting for some people. I'm still waiting for some people. I'm still waiting for some people. Oh, <laughs> if you drink of Jacob's well, you will test again. If you drink of Jacob's well, you will test again. But if you drink of the water Jesus has to offer this morning, you will never, never test again. Come on. 
that this is not just another segment of the service that we have to tick this morning. In the place of preparation, God said, there were people in this place this morning, or there are people in this place this morning, and you've been having a lot of things lingering around you for too long. He said he's breaking them this morning. Yeah, that was what he said, that he's breaking them this morning. So we are not just passing time. <laughs> Many of you are standing and looking at me as though we, you don't understand what's happening in this place. Now. We are not just passing time. We are not just passing time. I give you 60 more seconds. Engage your spirit. I'm waiting for some of you. Engage your spirit. 60 more seconds. Engage your spirit in this place this morning. Oh, You are sure. You read, you read. You are mighty in my life. I am my honey by heart. So you read. You are mighty in my life. I want it to sink in. Eh? Hey, you read, you read. So now when you step up tomorrow, 
shadows you know that is mighty in your life. Come on. One more time. One more time. You reign, you reign. And then make a pause. Hey, that time. Can you give him praise in this house? Can we give him praise? Give him praise. What a good God we serve. Give him praise, give him praise. He's a mighty God. There's no one to be compared to him. There's no one like him. He's the reason why we're living. He's the reason why we breathe. He's the reason why we exist. Can you wave your hands and appreciate him? He's the reason for your existence. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Blessed be God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Uh, give him praise. Give him praise. In him was life, uh, and the life was the light of man. Uh, open up your mouth and give him praise. Give him praise. We're the tongue-speaking believers. Uh, can you open up your mouth and begin to speak in tongues? Uh, begin to speak in other language. Uh, let the Mango Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your faithfulness. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for joy. Thank you for peace. Thank you because you're the reason why we are standing today. You're the reason why we are praying today. You're the reason why we exist. You are the reason of salvation. You are the reason of salvation in our lives. We give you all the praise, Jesus. We give you all the honor, adoration, be unto your name, praises be unto your name. Glory, 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 and honor unto your name. Let the atab and those jane, as semana kota legabrande, aliga ba those chate, ala da kota legabrande iskate, laga de legabrande iskate, enenga kata bando shata, emando kote. Thank you, our Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Philippians 1 9, for we pray that your love may abide, your love may abide in knowledge and in, in knowledge and in judgment. Your love will abide in knowledge and in judgment. In judgment, and the judgment of God is not like the judgment that you think. The judgment of God is the love of God. The judgment of God is the love of God. Don't think that God will judge you, he will destroy you. His judgment is his love. If you look at God, you see love. Everything about God is love. And what is the prayer this morning? We pray that we walk in the revelation of God's love and all that redemption has made available. That is our declaration this morning. In the name of Jesus. Can you open your mouth and begin to make that prayer? In the name of Jesus. We walk in God's love, God's revelation. And all, and all redemption. Redemption has made available for us in the name of Jesus. Legabrande, 
Lebrande is Janaha, as Zimana, as Yakota Legabrande. We walk in God's revelation of love, Lebanda Shateha, Elando Ko Shateha, Elabando Shateha, and we take possession of all redemption as made available for us. Thank you, our Father, Lada Ko Shateha, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And John 3 16, for God so loved the world and that he gave his only begotten son. And we have that same entity inside of us. Hallelujah. We have that same entity inside of us. So we are supposed to dispense love anywhere we go. We are supposed to dispense love anywhere we go. What is the next prayer? We are going to pray that we walk in the consciousness of God. And anywhere we go, we dispense love in the name of Jesus. Can we open our mouth and begin to make that prayer? Anywhere we go, we dispense love. With the spence love anywhere we go, with the spence love in the name of Jesus. I think love, I move love. La do shata, and minga kate lega brando shaneha, and liga da shateha, and la de dega bando shateha. Anywhere I go, men experience love in the name of Jesus because I have love inside of me, I have the seed of love in me in the name of Jesus. La do shateha. That is my declaration this morning. I give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be to your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Can somebody say amen? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Glory! Hallelujah. Can you have your seat, please, as we receive the seraphs? Praise the Lord. What manner of love that the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He gave it with a price. His love has no condition. That's the greatest love.
Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Oh. Say great.
Welcome. assembly we teach and God makes now love is not difficult because love is God God is love and if I have God I shouldn't struggle to love you got upset got angry your brother was promoted it amazes some people don't greet anybody because God raised them up somewhere some people don't reach out to anybody because they feel they should have been the one that is envy and when envy is there God is absent most of your poverty most of the lack and scarcity of our life is a product of hatred and unforgiveness now listen to me listen listen you cannot be praying for somebody to be blessed and envy the person are you listening to what i'm saying the lady is angry because she feels she should have been the one that she got married and then somebody got married before some of us have so built hatred and envy in our life until to a point is affecting our appearance because listen all of these things that i'm explaining explain it they are in the heart and when a man's heart is envious bitter and then full of backbite betrayer that man is a beast so most people's ugliness is a product of this thing they are ugly when they show up when they eat it doesn't show in the skin when the doctor says food has reflection in the skin but you eat yet nothing is showing when you look at your hair your hair is breaking because your envy hatred is too much you look at people they are looking fine you are not looking fine it's not their problem now listen to me holy ghost help me here help me when you wear this suit i'm wearing if there is hate you won't find like the one i'm fine Launch our service holds every Wednesday at 12 p.m. You can join online via all Dadiken A B Terrace social media platforms. Next Sunday is our family empowerment service. Do well to come along with your friends, family, and loved ones. Come in your splendor, in your beautiful attires. It promises to be an exciting time in God's presence. Seasons. Don't play with seasons. Seasons are for investment. The time is 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. respectively for first and second service. Do you think you found the love of your life? Then this is for you. Ensure to complete our three months marriage class as this is compulsory before the wedding date. Do contact the numbers on your screen. Also, if you've just had a beautiful baby, don't forget to reach the following numbers on your screen for your baby dedication.
Making Propagation of God's Word, Church on the Street holds on the 20th of April 2024 at Amarata, Onopa and Obele at 8 a.m. prompt. In the same vein, Church in the Marketplace offices business places as well as social media space holds on the 22nd through 27th April 2024. Be there at 8 a.m. Scripture says God will give us a man of God after his heart. And here at the Refined People's Assembly, we've got an amazing man of God who fits us spiritually, financially, physically, and what more can you say? He's all round loving and amazing. As Pastor Appreciation Day approaches, I'll implore you and encourage you to pour out your unconditional love towards him. It's the 28th of April, 2024. Beauty cannot survive in envy. Oh, you didn't hear what I teach. And that's the power of the church. That's why sinners make mockery of you. How much do you have that you are boasting? A church member will work for a boss. You see, because they feel they attend the same church. How do you feel? You are working for your boss. You are the one slandering your boss. You are working for your boss. You are the one betraying your boss. You are the one betraying your pastor. You are the one betraying your church. They say to you, that church, everybody is a ritual. That church, everybody has a girlfriend. What of the church? Is there any church that human beings don't gather? Why do you think it's your church that is bad? Let me even, let me even bust your bubble. Some of the, the big churches you see, the corruption there, you might not be able to handle it. And the corruption is not a building, it's the people that live inside. These are not messages church people like. God will give you a car. What useless car are you driving with the spirit of envy? God will give you a house. What are we dedicating a house where a demon that has envy people? Envy has boxed you. You don't have liberty when you have envy. When you have bitterness, you don't have liberty. They sing and sing. Nothing is exciting you because your heart is stony. The stony heart is inside. But God says in the Old Testament, this is the prophecy. I will give you the heart of flesh. Why the heart of flesh? So that you can have capacity to forgive. Teaching good now. A new date has been fixed for the Transform International Leadership Institute, earlier slated for April 6th, 2024. It is now April 27th, 2024. Time is 11 a.m. prompt. To be a part of this, pick up forms at 5,000 Naira only at the resource stand. The following vacancies are available for employment at the Transform International Leadership Institute. Social Media Manager, Graphic Designer, Videographer, Cleaners, Photographer and Office Assistant. Those interested should please visit the church office. T-shirts are available for pre-order for a token of 7,000 Naira only. This is the official T-shirt for all church outreach programs. Please visit the resource stand to place your order. Kingdom Builders Empowerment Foundation aims to award scholarships to Transform International Leadership Institute. It is open to those who are done with secondary school and university level students. Below are the criteria. You must have completed a membership class. You must be serving in a unit. Must be passionate about the vision of Daddy Care Ministries International and have a recommendation letter from your unit leader. Note, the interview is slated for the 18th of April 20. 2024 at 10 a.m. through 12 p.m. This union put believers in charge. We're entirely united. Unbreakable union we have with Christ. Now everything that happened to him and everything he is is everything I am. Being in Christ is our safety. You are saved from troubles. You are saved from pain. You are saved from confusion. You can be in and be confused. So what Jesus cannot do, he can't find in you. There are things that is in him that I have. If he can't be sick, I can't be sick. Cannot be broke, I can't be broke. Now these are words that you have to accept. This you know with Christ is where we are grounded. We are grounded. It's with everlasting joy and it's with liberty. Don't you know sometimes God speaks to you, do this, you will not be going to and fro. I tell you, do this business and you'll be amazed what you will have. Now these are words that you have to accept. Because if he doesn't accept them, he doesn't have reflection in your life. It is your acceptance of the word that brings the reflection of the word. The word you've not received, you don't manifest. As we model after Christ, I'll encourage you to pick up a partnership form 
at the resource stand if you're yet to be a partner. And to all our partners all over the world helping to spread the gospel, we say thank you and God bless you. And that's it for today on Trepper Update. Many thanks for staying with us. I am Stella Anderson. Have a wonderful week ahead. Being in Christ is our safety. You are safe from troubles. Glory to Jesus. I'm particularly grateful to be here this morning. And I'm also grateful to see everyone that's in this house today. I want to express gratitude to my brother and friend, the Dr. Betty Ken Dave Materia. I'd like us to celebrate our pastor. And everyone that's a part of the Refined People's Assembly Ministry team. Um, God bless you for the good works you are doing. Can you say amen? Yeah. While you're standing, I'd like you to turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 1. A couple of scriptures and I will share God's word briefly with us. Hebrews chapter 1, I'll start reading from verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, had in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And quickly, I'd like you to round up to First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. First John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Uh, just help me look at your neighbor and say, the greatest is love. Tell someone else and say, the greatest is love. Father, we thank you this morning, and our hearts are open to receive from you. We pray today that the entrance of your word shall give us light. The entrance of your word should bring healings and transformations, and needs shall be met by the impact of your word. Thank you, Father. Let everyone say amen. amen. Please take your seat. I open by indicating that the revelation and the person and the character and the nature of God is essentially wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. That also means that we must be able to bring certain scriptures to agree with this position. I would move to Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, where it tells us that Jesus is the visible expression of the invisible God. And that is to say that there is no revelation of God other than Jesus. Uh, in the time past, Hebrews chapter 1 tells us, in the time past, God has spoken to us in through diverse means and diverse ways. I want, I want us to see 
the, the workings of God are progressive. The workings of God are not static. The workings of God are simply progressive. And the implication of that is that God can speak a word to you today and tomorrow he tells you another thing. Uh, the next thing he tells you does not indicate that the first thing he told you was wrong. What it just indicates is that there is a progressiveness in his workings in your life. Are you in church this morning? Okay, so we, we see that in the time past, he has spoken, Hebrews tells us that, he has spoken to us through the prophets and through dreams and visions and all sort of things. But as he becomes progressive as his nature is in his dealings with his creation. He considers that the right way to speak to us in the now uh, is not through prophets and dreams and revelations and all the things we have. He considers that the most authentic way to speak to us now is true and in his son. Uh, the concept of the sonship of Jesus as the son of God does not mean that the father had a wife, I would always say, and then uh, she got pregnant and then she gave birth to a son and they called him Jesus. Uh, the concept is that Jesus, who is the word of God, is the expression of the verbal essence of the father. Because your word is actually your verbal essence. And so Jesus did not just appear as a man. This is what happens is um, out of the father proceeds the word of the father. And when the word of the father proceeds from the father, the word becomes flesh. In other words, he, he took on a physical body in order to exist in this material realm. And so that means that this word that proceeded from the father is the son of the father because the source of that word is the father. Are you following me in church this morning? So if the source of that word is the father, we are right to call him the son of God. Not with the mind that the father gave birth to him, uh, as in biologically, but with the mindset that he proceeded from the father having the same abilities, capabilities, and capacity. And so we see Jesus as the word or the expression of the Father. So Hebrews tells us that no man has seen God at any time at all. And the only information we have about God is that which he reveals in himself. And he reveals it in the person of Jesus. Uh, the implication of this is that there is no word or expression of the character of God outside of Christ. I want you to see where I'm going now. There is no word of God to you outside that which comes from Christ and in Christ. Uh, Hebrews also particularly tells us the mode uh, through which God is speaking now. And so the voice of God God is the person of Jesus. If I understand that the voice of God is the person of Jesus, I would also have in my mind as a backdrop that the visible expression or the real revelation, can I hear you say revelation? The real revelation of the invisible God. Uh, the invisibility of God is what talking about because we have all sort of people everywhere that tell us how they have seen God face to face. And uh, they, have, they, have, um, they have eaten with God. They, they even drank tea with God. They did all sort of things with God. There is, there is no kind of thing people do not say about God. But you see, every statement or utterance that contradicts the provisions of scriptures is not authentic. And it res irrespective of who says it, because uh, in Africa, truth depends on the personality that speaks it. 
And, and this is something we must have to correct because truth is not a respecter of persons. And so here we know that God is invisible. Uh, when we say he's invisible, it means to my optical eyes, he cannot uh, be beheld. I can't see him with my optical eyes. Uh, the scripture calls him that God is spirit. It is, it is not even that God is a spirit. It just says that God is spirit. What it means when he says God is spirit is he is not one of the spirits, but he is the source of spirituality. Uh, so nothing would exist in the spirit realm outside of him. He's he so powerful that he lives in the realm of the spirit and the realm of the spirit exists in him. So you deal with that kind of God and scripture now tells us that this Jesus is the visible expression of this God. And that's to say that nobody had seen him at any time at all. Nobody had understood his real character. Uh, nobody at all. Nobody at all. And so Jesus shows up as the visible expression of God being God himself. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. I hear the prophet prophecy of Isaiah, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called the Wonderful Counselor, uh, the Mighty God. Uh, if we thought Isaiah was talking about a biological child of Joseph, we would be mistaken, because Joseph would not give birth to a child and call him the Wonderful God. God. Uh, you can't call your child the everlasting father. And so Isaiah must be talking about someone that is an incarnation of divinity. And so he goes on to say, we shall call his name the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father. Just in case you have a doubt about the Godship of Jesus, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, you settle your doubt. Uh, he is not a man that ascended to divinity. He is divinity that descended to humanity. Uh, are you in church this morning here? Yeah. And so we notice this, so Jesus is the only visible expression or the real revelation of this invisible God. He is the only correct knowledge. Can I hear you say correct knowledge? He is the only correct knowledge of God. And when I say correct knowledge, I want you to summarize every revelation of God in scriptures from Genesis all the way and see that the only correct and authentic revelation of God is that which is in Christ. Uh, the implication now again is that whatever anyone spoke that is not consistent with the character and expressions of Christ, and even though they said it about God, God is not the nature of God. And so it is in the light of the revelation of Jesus that we judge the word of God. And so if Moses said a thing that was not consistent with the character of Jesus Christ, who is a visible expression of the Father, it means that Moses must be wrong. Did I touch your prophet? So if, if Isaiah said a thing that was inconsistent with the character of Jesus because he is the revelation of the invisible God. And what that means is that anything that is not a part of the character of Jesus cannot be the character of the Father. And anything that is not a part of the lifestyle of Jesus cannot be the lifestyle of the Father. I'm trying to take us somewhere and anything that Jesus did not say about the father or acknowledge about the father is not correct irrespective of who says it so now John John writes in uh, chapter 4 uh, verse 8 of his epistles he, he writes and says that God is love that's where I'm going now uh, because because we do not know God except through Jesus uh, we do not know him we haven't seen him with our eyes we we do not know him you may have dreams I know some of you have had dreams and visions where you saw one old man with beards and 
he stands in front of you and says, my son, my son, uh, I am calling you. That's, that's how some people came into ministry because one bearded old man showed up in your visions and in your dreams. That is not God because God doesn't need to be a bearded old man to speak to you. <laughs> and so Jesus reveals to us the character of God and he says, now God is love. Uh, he, he, that, that's, that's the correct revelation of God. His characteristic, his nature is simply a nature of love. And he resonates with John chapter 13 verse 35. And when Jesus looked at his disciples and said, you have operated in Moses. You have operated in the law. But I give you a new commandment. Uh, the movement from the old to the new is as a result of the progressiveness of God. I want you to see uh, uh, the reason why we have to move from the law to grace is as a result of the progressiveness of God. And when God has moved from a place and you still remain there, you are on your own. Uh, he has moved into the future. I need to move into the future with him. Uh, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. This is the characteristics that heaven upholds. And this is my nature. If you are my disciple, then you you have to love one another. Let me just look at the universe. I love you. The reason he said this is because uh, what you received at the new birth is the nature of God. What you received at the new birth is the gene of God. That's what entered into you. You, you just didn't get born again to be a good man. Uh, you received Jesus to have the God life. Uh, Jesus says in John chapter 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way. There is no access to God. I am the way. I am the way to the father i am the true revelation of the father and i am the life of the father uh, the life of the father is the zoe life eternal life and he says i am the revelation the way and the very essence the life of the father so when i received jesus i received his nature can you lift your hands and say i have his nature I'm talking to believers this morning. When I received Jesus, I received his life. Can you lift your hands and say, I have his life. When I received Jesus, I received access. Can you lift your hands and say, I have access. And so I'm not trying to have access to the Father. I already have access to the Father. I'm not trying to find a way to God. I already have come into where he is. In fact, he is in me and I am in him. I want us to look at this way. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus in a discourse with Nicodemus, he said, Except a man is born again, he cannot have access into the kingdom of God. Uh, if I put it on the converse, what? Jesus said is when a man gets born again he has entered into the kingdom of God. Uh, in the kingdom of God there is a lifestyle that is dependent on the nature and the character of God. And that's why the first thing he does is to instill his gene inside of me uh, so I can live according to his expectations. God does not ask you to do what he has not given you the capacity and the ability to do. It, that means that if he says love, he has given you the ability and the capacity to love. Am I talking to someone here this morning? And so now I have become a recipient of his love. Uh, God is love. Church, can I hear you say God is love? God is love, so I have received this nature. I have received his gene. I have received his characteristics. It means that there is an expression that ought to come out of me. There is something that desires, the Father desires to flow out of me. And that has to be his nature that is instilled in me. Uh, you are not trying to be like him. You are already like him. Uh, you are not trying to have his nature you already have his nature and so what I have received is meant to be expressed uh, this is the revelation we have to understand this and everything that God has put inside of me they are meant to flow out of me and everything that he has deposited inside of you they are meant to be a blessing to your brother and so I am not the 
recipient of the expression that flows from me. Uh, God's love nature is inside of me, but it is not to love myself, it is to love my brother. I have to see this. I have to see this. I am not the primary recipient of the love nature of God that is inside of me. And it begins to get difficult now because uh, the love nature of God that is inside of me when I believe ought to flow from me to my brother. Uh, many times the question is not me. The question is my brother. That, that's where the test is. Uh, can you love him the way he is because if he was perfect you would not be expected to love him and so now he says let us love one another and there is a difficulty that I have here looking at believers have you ever seen uh, crazy believers have you ever seen believers who act like they can't be put into control have you ever seen believers who are born again yet uh, their lifestyles are incomprehensible have you ever seen believers who are punk talking yet their mouths run like it has no control. Have you ever seen believers who uh, they are children of God and full of the Holy Ghost yet when you look at their life there are faults and errors and things that should make you avoid him. Uh, some of you in church here yeah, you avoid yourselves. Uh, uh, you just say I, I want to keep my peace. I, I, want, I don't want the trouble. I don't, want, I don't want somebody to talk to me anyhow and disrespect me. I, 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 I don't hate her but I avoid her. If you love me, you won't avoid me. Uh, and so he said, let us love one another. It is the one another that I want to look at now because the one another that he tells me to express my love towards uh, may not be qualified for my love. Uh, it is in the picture of divinity stepping into humanity uh, because it is as a result of love that he steps into humanity. Uh, Jesus stepping from divinity to humanity is actually not necessarily humility. It is actually humiliation. Uh, yes, because for divinity to put on flesh, it is totally out of its sphere, but he has to do it. It has to be a shameful experience for him to step into humanity, yeah? but he still stepped into humanity. There is no reason why you should not love your brother. Huh? There is no reason why you should not love your sister. Huh? There is no reason why you should not love the next person. Am I talking to us here today? Yeah? And we have to look at this. So love one another because love is the nature of God. How can you, how can you say you love God? Because I've got people in church who say I love Jesus and we're singing a song. The other time I told us believers don't tell lies. They just sing lies. Uh, they don't tell lies. They just sing. They just sing it. They sing it. They don't tell lies. And, and, and uh, I love you forever. I love you. You're singing that to Jesus but the next person standing by you your heart is full of hatred and, and, and passionate envy toward that person. And you are in the same choir. You are in the same unit. You are in the same department. You are in the same uh, uh, am I talking to you in this house today? Uh, you can't love God that you don't see with your eyes and hate men that you see with your eyes. The first test of your love is your brother. The first test of your love is your sister. The first test of your love is that new brother that doesn't know how to do church things. He walks into church and doesn't follow the protocols. You just look at him and in your heart you say, what stupid person is this? When you love, you don't tolerate, you accommodate. The first love, it expresses itself in my ability to accommodate you and that means that no matter what you do I am your brother no matter how crazy you are you are still my sister let us love one another because this is the nature of God it is the character of God and he expects me to express his nature and his character in this present world I couldn't be a child of God until I had the nature of love and when I received his nature nature of love. Uh, love is not one of the things that God does. Uh, love is his nature that he cannot resist. Uh, he is not even able to control his love. Uh, he does not just love the righteous. He loves even those you don't love. Uh, 
uh, God commended his love toward us uh, in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us uh, uh, hardly would a good man die for a good man uh, but he came down and he died for the unrighteous uh, it shows you to say to you uh, no matter how bad the brother is you can love him uh, and no matter how crazy the sister is you can love her uh, and let's look at what exactly is love because uh, uh, many times we think that love is just uh, what my eyes tells me but let me put it here uh, that love is an intense feeling of great affection uh, and that's the first point it makes to me uh, it's an intense feeling of great affection for someone uh, and affection is a feeling of liking and caring about someone uh, and that automatically means that when love is in place uh, care will be in place uh, because you would want to care for anything that you love uh, you would want to care for anyone that you love uh, and so God has an affection towards you he has an affection towards me he has a feeling towards me uh, God has some emotions uh, and it is in his emotion that he shows compassion uh, and he just looks at me the way I am and he says uh, no matter how broken you are I can still pick you up uh, because in the place of love you don't even talk about forgiveness uh, we're talking about modeling after Christ uh, uh, are you still with me here this morning uh, and love is in place uh, I don't need to forgive you uh, because in the first place my love nature does not allow me to hold it against you uh, there is only going to be the need for forgiveness when there have been grievances uh, and I've heard it so long against you uh, but what it says now love one another uh, he knows that there is someone that may not fit into your pattern uh, but I don't need to fit into your pattern for you to love me uh, and so in the place of love now the word we use is accommodate uh, accommodate one another uh, because you can't break my heart with your attitude uh, you can't get me to become bitter with your attitude uh, uh, too many church people are full of bitterness and all sort of attitudes uh, our prayer languages can tell how bitter our hearts are uh, we gather in places and we pray and ask God to kill people uh, and the reason is because you are angry and you are mad at them uh, and you think that the man took your position so he has to die uh, and God would have to kill him uh, the truth about it is that God does not hate those that you don't like and so now he says, understand this, understand this. The fact that you don't love me will not be the reason why God has to kill me. Uh, if we look at Jesus as the visible expression of the character of God, we would understand that God does not kill men. Uh, because I looked at the life of Jesus throughout his work on it, and I noticed that Jesus never killed anybody. He, he never killed anything. Have you, have you studied your Bibles and see uh, Jesus never killed anybody. Yeah? He was hated by the Pharisees, but he never killed him. He was hated by the scribes, but he never killed him. He had power to kill them. He, he had power to kill them. One day in Mark chapter 11, he was passing by and needed to eat fruit from a tree because he was hungry. He, he couldn't find any fruit from that tree and he just spoke to the tree and said, let nobody eat from you anymore. And then he just left. The next day, they're passing by. His disciples calls his attention and said, Master, the tree that you cursed yesterday had died. Uh, it was not Jesus that cursed the tree uh, because he would not curse. It was Peter's orientation because most times your definitions are subject to your orientation. Uh, it was by his orientation that he defined it to be a curse. Uh, Jesus simply spoke to the tree uh, and said nobody should eat from you anymore. Uh, but that's just to give you a revelation that he had power if he wanted to kill if there was need for him to kill he had the power but he never did that at all it is this Jesus that is a correct revelation of the character of God if Jesus never killed any man then God is not a killer of man oh, can I tell you his mission today Luke chapter 19 verse 10 for the son of man is come to seek and to save he didn't come to kill he came to save 
save. Uh, he shall save his people from their sins. He never kills anyone. Look at your neighbor and say, he will not kill you. I may not like you, but he will not kill you. I may pray from now till tomorrow against you, but he will not kill you. I may hate your style, but he will not kill you. Just because I don't like you doesn't mean he hates you. God loves even those I hate. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? A new commandment I give to you. In Moses, it was an eye for an eye. It was an eye for an eye. Anybody that walked against you ought to go down for you. Can I speak to you in this house today? Nobody needs to go down for you to rise. Nobody needs to die for you to express the goodness of God. Nobody needs to be paralyzed for you to move forward. Because what makes you who you are is not on the outside. What makes you who you are is on the inside. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They may have told you your mother in the village is a witch. She does not need to die for you to go forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? And they may have told you your father is a wizard. And some of you have cut off ties with your relatives because they told you that they are witches and they are wizards. And no matter what they are, they are simply sinners. In fact, when you say that, it is an indication of irresponsibility on your side. How could you be a child of God and the God life in you could not overpower the darkness in them? And you gather in church and pray that they die. They are not dying anything at all because God is not a killer. If you want them to die, you ought to look for some means to kill them. And that's why the church has resorted, resorted to so many things, resorted to voodoo, resorted to all sorts of practices because you want to point them and they die. And nobody will die. Jesus came to save. Lift your hands and say, Jesus saves. He came to save. And so he reveals the character of the Father. Uh, it is not the will of the Father that any should be destroyed. Uh, how about the testimony you heard? Uh, when we had finished praying, my neighbor just fell down and died. Uh, have you heard any such testimony before? Uh, but I can tell you it was not God that slew them. Uh, you only activated Satan to do his work. Uh, because he's a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, Jesus said, I have come. Uh, I came for one reason that they might have life if it is not giving life it is not of Jesus if it is giving life then it is of Jesus no commandment I give to you that you love one another look at me in my imperfections and look at me in my misbehaviors and attitudes and let the God nature that is in you flow out of you irrespective of what I did against you in the past you can let it go look at your neighbor and say let it go let it go. If you hold it against me, it will not eat me up. It will only eat you up. Too many persons in church and bitterness is eating them up. When you walk up there, you walk into church and that sister walks up here and begins to sing. Your heart goes high because bitterness is eating you up. Whatever she did to you, I don't know what she did to you. That brother walks up there, you say, that one is not qualified to hold the microphone. And you hold all of these things in their heart. And when we sing, we still lift up our hands as a Holy Spirit. How can we experience him with the strangers in our lives? Covetousness is a stranger. Envy is a stranger. Hatred is a stranger. Anger is a stranger. Bitterness is a stranger. And you don't hold it against anybody else. You hold it against your brother. No matter how mad your brother is, your brother is your brother. There are certain things you cannot change. And no matter how poor your daddy is, your daddy is still your daddy. There are certain things you cannot change. No matter how illiterate your mommy is, your mommy is still your mommy. Your brother may be a drunkard on the streets. You may de decide to pretend like you did not see him. But your brother is your brother. Are uh, you in church here this morning? If your brother is your brother, then you have to do yourself some good now. The good you have to do yourself is to act 
have it, the law of character. I say, I have to love you anyhow. I'm preaching for a change this morning in church. Are you still with me here today? I have to love you just the way you are. Because in the first place, he loved me the way I am. Don't walk into church now and claim like you were one saint before you got saved. None of us were saints before we got saved. Even though you never did any wrong thing at all. The fact that you were born by your parents automatically made you a sinner. So you are a sinner saved. Uh, saved by grace. You are a sinner saved by the love of God. And if he shed his love towards you, what he says now is, I want you to do the same to your brother. Let us love one another. Because love is of God. Give your neighbor a high five. I said the greatest is love. Leave that tongue talking. The greatest is love. Leave the miracles. The greatest is love. Leave the testimonies. The greatest is love. Leave the power and charisma. The greatest is love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. When he says you are my disciples, what he says to you. All men will know by this element in you that you are actually following me. Because you can't follow him and be hateful. You can't follow him and be bitter. This is a proof to the world that you have known Jesus. When you have love for one another, the world is watching. We will not disappoint the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? By this shall all men know. It is that affection that I have towards you. It is that intense feeling that I have towards you. It means that if something happens to you and it is a negative thing, I will not rejoice. I will be heartbroken. I have a feeling for you. Because if it concerns you, it concerns me. Uh, you see here today, let us love one another. Many times it is common that people can be in the same place. They are physically together, but internally they are not together at all. They are not connected at all. But I want you to do something today. Hold someone's hand by your side. I say, no matter what, you are my brother. No matter what, you are my sister. You may have offended me, but I'm here for a change. I still love you. Uh, yes, I just leave that person. It is this feeling. I care about you. I care about you. Uh, there is no enemy in this house. We are sons and daughters of God. You are my brother. You are my sister. I hold you. I stand with you. Your pain should not be my testimony. Oh. Oh, uh, your pain should not be my celebration. Uh, you may have hurt me, but I love you. Uh, and I don't hold it against you. Uh, and this is how God relates with us. Uh, he so loves. Uh, he so loves until he sacrifices. Uh, and where there is love, uh, I told you that forgiveness is easy. Uh, the reason you cannot forgive is because you don't love. Uh, you don't have the heart of love. Uh, and here is the point about it. Uh, you can can't love until you know how much God has loved you. The moment you understand how much the Father has loved you, it becomes easy for you to love someone. A new commandment I give to you. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that is born of God, everyone that loves is born of God. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4. Paul writes now, he said in the school of love just in case you want to say but my brother keeps getting at me and my sister keeps getting at me but Paul writes and says love love is patient uh, it will endure your craziness and your stupidity love is patient it will endure the misbehavior of his brother love is patient it will endure the mistakes of his brother love is is patient. It will not revolt because there is a shortcoming. Because in the first place, I don't need to be perfect for me to be loved by you. You just need to be a child of God for you to be able to love me. Love is patient. It watches you and then it prays for you and then it flows towards you and it endeavors to make you better. Love will stay. It will stay for five years. It will stay for 10 years. 
is. You were only offended a little in church and you decided to bolt out of the church. The truth is that the nature of God was never in you because there is no offense that love cannot accommodate. There is no, I feel this sin in this house today, my time is up. There is no offense for God so loved. He so loved, uh, not the church. He loved his enemies. Uh, the Lord told you, uh, pray so that your enemies will die. And hate those that walk against you. And fight against those that kill you. All over our city are witchcraft houses. Where people gather to hate and to express love and hatred in prayer and they just say die 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 and when they start the die 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 thing they're thinking about somebody that offended them last week in the market they're thinking about someone that took their place in the office but here is the nature of Christ irrespective of what you have done you are my brother and you are my sister greater love had no man than this that a man would go to the extent of laying down his life for his friends how much have you taken from your brother huh, that you are so bitter now? Huh? And the problem is that the bitterness is not eating up your brother. Huh? The bitterness is eating you up. Uh, the anger is not eating up your brother. Huh? Can't you understand? Huh? You got so bitter and so angry huh? until the little things you can do in the house of God, you are unable to do them anymore huh? because something is drying up on the inside of you. Huh? Hatred dries you up. Huh? It dries you up until you become like a piece of biscuit and no moisture can come out of you because when the absence of love simply means dryness you can't keep on like this you've got to change am I talking to you here today you've got to change break the wall of hatred break the wall of partition and we begin to model after Jesus because while he walked on earth he just walked in love it's power and it is virtue to stay in love when men hate you. It is power and it is virtue to still love those that hate you. It is weakness to hate those that hate you. I'm not talking to you today. But it is virtue. When you throw the stones at me, I just pick it up and bless you. And so Jesus says to us now, bless those who curse you. He wasn't joking. He wasn't just trying to talk. He actually meant to communicate to us the life and the kingdom because the kingdom of God is not about meat and drink it's a life of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost love is of God because God is love he is affectionate he is not dry towards me God is love and I ought to be love love will stay until you become the best it will help you it will make you up I want to serve to someone here today there is no reason to hate your brother. Stand to your feet. There is no reason to hate your sister. I know she took your fancy. And the man you so loved. There is no reason to hate your brother. We can't be sons of God and have the nature of Satan. We can't be sons of God and have the elements of darkness. These things are strangers amongst us. By this, Shall the people know that you are walking after me? And the absence of love has a language. You may so hate this brother and pretend about it. Because church people are full of pretense. They're full of pretense. 
while we're in church today, if we would attach a device to your heart and project on this screen what some of you think about yourselves here, this service will be over. Even now, to be over. But here is the point. I can pretend I love you while I actually hate you. Because I can try to cover that up with some dry greetings. Bless you. We bless our brothers with our mouth. And we hate them in our hearts. Because you feel you should have been the one that should have been promoted. And now it's him. The truth is that God does not use the best people. He uses available people. God is not in search for the best. He's a workman. He just uses the tool that is available. So while I'm pretending to love you, but I actually have issues against you in my heart. It's okay to be offended, but it's not okay to hold the offense. And it has a language. And it has an image. Those who have eyes, will see that you're just trying to impress you actually hate him but you're trying to cover it up those who have eyes can see if men can see then God can see better the greatest test of our obedience it's not that which men say to us. The greatest validation we can have is that which God speaks about us. I can't see your heart, but you can see your heart. What he says now is let us love one another. And I'll close with this. If I love you, you won't need my forgiveness. Because love covers a multitude. Not one sin. Not five. When it says a multitude, as many as you can imagine, love covers it. Imagine what the church would be if we walk in this character of Christ. We won't need to bind devils. Mm -hmm. Because when we, when there is love, there would be unity. And when there is unity, our unity suffocates the adversary amongst us. We won't need to pray about it. So the greatest is love. While you rattle in tongues, pata kata pata kata pa. Do you love me? While I cast out demons and perform and see visions, can I get back? So that young man that I've had issues with, I still embrace him out of a free heart. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that love it, that's a sign that you are born of God. Lift your hands and bless Jesus this morning. Mm. If I love Jesus, I ought to love men. 
Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. To me, he is so wonderful. Lift your hands and bless him because he first loved me. Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love you. How I love you, Jesus. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to pray for someone here today. You've had people hurt you. And it's becoming difficult, even though you want to love. You want to show them love. But you're struggling with it. And you're saying, Lord, I need you to help me. Come here, let me pray for you. Now, if you're such a person, just come, quickly. God bless you, come. To me, he's so wonderful. The grace of God enables us to do things. I love you. He's so wonderful to me, to me. Yes, he's so wonderful. Because he first, because he I like us to lift our voices and shout Oh, how I love you, Jesus. Oh, how I love you. How I love you, Jesus. How I love you, Jesus. How I love you, everyone in front. While I spoke God's word to us, I knew that holds of bitterness were breaking off. And I'm glad you said yes to Jesus. Jesus does not set you free and leave you to be in bondage at some other places. If the son makes you free, you are free indeed. He totally sets you free. You are already free. Satan was just trying to mess with you. So I pray for you this morning in the name of Jesus. I enforce God's word today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is grace on your heart. Forgiveness flows from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every one of you in the name of Jesus. In the, I, I stare the at ability, the capacity to accommodate even the most difficult person in your life. In the name of Jesus, you get back home, you will love your siblings. You will love your parents. You will love your spouse. You will love your colleagues. You will love other brethren. In the name of Jesus. And while this happens, healings happens to your bodies. Healings happens to your bodies. Healings happens to your bodies. Be blessed this morning in the name of Jesus. You can go back to your seat by sing the song. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes, I love him. Oh, can you celebrate Jesus? You can do better. You can do better. Woo! What a word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Can we celebrate the grace of God on the life of this dear man of God, Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Innocent, who has been a huge blessing to us this morning. Can you celebrate him again? Celebrate the grace of God on his life. Woo! What a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Hallelujah. The foundation of our Christian work is love and forgiveness. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Can you celebrate Jesus one more time? Yeah. Hallelujah. You can do better. Celebrate Jesus. Glory to God. In this atmosphere of love, one way we express our love towards God is through giving. So can we dip our hands in our pocket, those that are using the bank details on the screen, for your transfer, let's give in love. Whatever you don't give in love is a sin. So give in love. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to give. We give because you're the first that gave yourself for us. And Father, we respond with our love towards you, knowing that as we give, we receive all grace as made available to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as you cast your seat in love. Continue. Please sing it in love. You can't sing this kind of song with uh, lukewarmness. Sing it with love, okay? I pray for you. You pray for me. I love. I need you to survive. I would harm you with the words from my mouth. I love you, I need you, just say I pray for you, and I know you pray for me, I love you, I need you, and I would love you, with words from my mouth.
Hallelujah. You see, the Bible instructs us to be doers of the word and not hearers alone. The blessing is in the doing of the word. Did you enjoy the service? Hallelujah. Before we receive our first timers, we want to do something quickly. So I will ask the committee for Church on the Streets to please step out with me. And let's um, pass a bit of information to all of you. And then talk about our responsibility for the forthcoming Church on the Street. Can you celebrate them as they come? Okay, let's go up because, you know, some of us are gifted in height. <laughs> celebrate Jesus. Okay, keep clapping. Some of them are still coming. Because we said church on the street, you are not clapping again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the church ought to be an exciting place. If you're not excited in church, something is wrong. We are a family. Hallelujah. So briefly, we'll just talk about Church on the Street. Church on the Street is coming up on the 20th of this month. Um, we want to encourage every one of you to be part of it. And we're actually ministering to three major areas, which is Amarata, Onopra, and Obele. So we want you to be part of it. Everyone here should be part of it. Okay? Now, one of the ways you participate in God's redemptive plan is given. And until God gets your heart, he cannot get what is in your hands. We're already saved, but the next responsibility is to promote what he died for. And what he died for, which is salvation, is promoted through resources. So we want to encourage you to be part of it because God can never accomplish his purpose without human involvement or participation. So if we all hear the word and we don't take it out, men will not be saved. So we want to encourage you to be part of it. There's no one that can fulfill God's plan alone. You can't fulfill God's plan in isolation. God has given our man of God a vision, vision 5,000, to reach out to the unsaved through the preaching of the gospel. He cannot do it all alone. That's why we are here, to hold up his hands. And one way we can do that is when we come out and give and fully participate. You cannot send your money to go and preach. Some persons will say, I will give, but I will not come. We will preach the gospel. God needs you to preach the gospel. They cannot hear the word without a preacher. So we need your voice. We need your participation. So we want to sow the seed for everyone here to be part of church on the street because it's our vision. I thought you would say amen. amen. Don't look at me like that. It's our vision. And now we're not telling you something that is different from God's vision for the world. His vision is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's what we are promoting. Say amen. amen. All right. So for us to give an opportunity for everyone to participate and give, we'll be displaying the account detail on the screen. Media, do you have Caris's account? You do? Please, let's have it on the screen, please. Media. Okay. All right, so I believe they are working on that. So please, even if you don't have the means to give through transfer and all that, please look at the members of the committee here. You can either see um, Pastor Harry or me or any of the members of the committee, and you can write, you know, whatever you want to give, wrap it in a piece of it, put your money inside, and it will get to us definitely. It will get to the source. So please give. Now, giving is not just in the volume of what you give, but with the heart with which is being given. So don't look at it that, oh, I must give 100,000 naira, I must give this. Give according to your capacity. But what is more important is your heart is in your giving. And that's where the blessing is. So thank you so much. And then secondly, we are all going out in our T-shirt. Okay? We're using this. That's why we're wearing this, okay? Good works. You can order for it. This is what we use for the community outreach. How many of you were there? It was a huge blessing. 
it was a huge blessing. There's nothing like putting smile on the faces of people. So please, we want to give everyone an opportunity to participate. So you can pre-order for your T-shirt um, from the resource, okay? It's just 7,000 there. And then we also make it, uh, we also create a flexibility plan where you can pay at least twice. So try and book in advance for your T-shirt. It'll be good that we are all putting on the T-shirt that day. But if you don't have the T-shirt, please don't stay at home. What God needs is you, all right? So please, let's do it together. We've, we've made it happen one time by the grace of God, church and community outreach, and we believe that this one will be greater if we all come out in our number and make it happen. Don't forget, God is counting on us. Praise the Lord. Can you celebrate Jesus? All right. You can do better than that. If you like what I just said, you, you appreciate God better. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are in this together. Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, that very day, we are meeting here in church by 7 in the morning. At most 8, we are hitting the first point. So don't come late. Okay? All right. The account detail is on the screen. So those of you that uh, wants to do transfer, it will get to us. Okay? We're working on an account on mission. Okay? So you know that bank process takes some time. So... I will believe that the next outing, you will see a ministry account on mission. Hallelujah. But please, you can trust this account, okay? It will definitely get to us. We've used it once, and it was successful, okay? Because we know amongst us, some persons have this discipline life. I see a person name. Will I say? No. <laughs> we're not like that. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to receive our first timers. If you know that this is your first... Oh, please... Can I receive Pastor Chima to do that for us? Praise God. Okay, before we receive our first time, I want to reiterate a few announcements. You've heard the announcements concerning church on the streets. There's also church in the marketplace. Commencing from Monday, the 22nd of April, all through that week. Okay, so it will end on Saturday, which is the 27th of April. What that means is that you are expected to talk to people about Jesus in your career place, in your offices, in your business places. That's what church in the marketplace is all about. We are not meeting in any particular place, but wherever you find yourself, in your offices, in your business places, in the market, please talk to people about Jesus and invite people to church. It's a mission for that week. So please ensure that you are involved. Do that at least one, two, or three of those days in that week and bring people to church. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' precious name. There is also Pastor's Appreciation Day. Are we glad about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. That comes up on Sunday, the 28th of April. That is exactly two weeks from today. Now, how that will work out, of course, it will be further... Uh, explained to us in due course, but it is mainly for us to appreciate and celebrate our man of God. He's not here today, but his spirit is with us, but it's good for us to properly explain this so that we know what we are doing. Of course, some of us have heard of it. Some of us may have experienced it in some other domains, in some other places. We know how it's being done. Prepare a gift. Prepare a gift, cash or kind or whatever material, preferably money that you use to appreciate God's servant. So we don't start giving pastor plantain and cows for him to sell. Car. Okay, yeah. Hallelujah. So whatever you, it is laid in your heart to give to pastor, he has been a blessing to you over the years. This is the first time I think that we're doing this. In a long time anyway, in a long time, at least I've not witnessed it in this church before. I have not. Okay, so I know we've, 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 this has not been done in about six years. So if God's servant has been a blessing to you, please prepare something. Prepare your mind between now and then what you want to give to a pastor. And then the way it will be done will be made known to us before that time. That's Pastor's Appreciation Day. Let it not take anybody by surprise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's also remember 
um, Saturday, the 20th, that is this coming Saturday, which is our church on the street day. There's also a wedding taking place here by 11 a.m. Yes, Saturday, that same day, 20th of April. A wedding is taking place here by 11 a.m. between our brother Eric and sister J. Priye. So please. <laughs> Hallelujah. We showed them to the church last week. We are not doing it again today. It's just to remind us to continue to support them, pray for them, be a blessing to them, and be a part of their success story, a part of their joy in Jesus' precious name. And then the next day after that, Sunday, the 21st of April, is our Thanksgiving Day. Remember to be in your native attire and want to also remind us our sister. Yeah. It's Thanksgiving, it's Family Empowerment Day. The same thing. We, ad, we dress in our native attires. Uh, the family of our sister, uh, the Barakatas, will be, you, uh, we all know Dobra. Uh, uh, the, the response came from this way. They will be doing their child dedication on that day. So please, let's prepare for that day. Praise God. Now, if today is your first time worshiping with us in the Refined People's Assembly, can you just show by raising your hand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful people over there. Wow, wow. This is, this is a blessing. Just, just keep raising your hands wherever you are. Okay, please do us a favor. Stand to your feet, please, sir. Stand to your feet. Just stand. We cannot go without appreciating you. Wow, this is a blessing. We cannot just close the service without celebrating you. Wonderful people that God blessed us with today. Hallelujah. Church, let's celebrate them one more time. Praise God. You know why we are excited? Because we, please keep standing, please. Thank you. Please keep standing. Why we are excited at seeing you is because we didn't bring you to this place. Maybe someone may have invited you or someone talked to you about this church, but the truth is that the Spirit of God led you to this place. Church is all about destiny. It's about your spiritual life, your spiritual destiny. And if you have located, if you have come to this place and you've been blessed and you feel like making this place your place of worship, we welcome you with open arms. It's our joy to have you. We want you to worship with us again and again. And if you are just visiting this town and you're just passing by, please, anytime you pass by again, we'd like to see your beautiful faces. On behalf of our lead pastor, who is absent today, the wonderful man of God that we have here, Reverend Dr. Dadiken Bittere, he welcomes you specially. He has asked us to let you know that he is pleased that you came. And if you like to make him your pastor, I am sure you will not regret that decision. One more time, God bless you for coming. And we pray for you today that every blessing that this house has to offer, that every gift, every grace, every unction that is on this house and is on the servants of God in this house, that they will all find expression in your lives in Jesus' name. And we pray for you that whatever is your urgent, imminent heart's desire today, as you have come to this place, that God will grant it in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Please, let's celebrate them one more time. So please, you have been given some cards. Quickly and correctly fill out those cards. Then go with... Please, man, go with the people that gave you those cards. Go with those friends around you. Just go with them. They have one or two other things to give to you, some words, some things to tell you, and then you return the cards to them. Just go with them. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. I was just thinking, each and every single time I come to church, I always thank God I did. I don't know about you. And every single time I come to church, I always thank God I did. Were you blessed in this service? Just appreciate God. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blessings that have entered into your life today, they will lead you, they will guide you to the fulfillment of your destiny, to the fulfillment of God's plan and purpose in your lives in Jesus' precious name. Every good thing that accompanies salvation, they will find expression in your lives in the name of Jesus. And I stand in the shoes of our Father, as he would say, you will not fail. You will not fail. That word is loaded, but I speak it to you again today. You will not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. God's plan, God's purpose for your life will find full expression in your life and times in the name of Jesus. Whatever you lay your hands to do will prosper in the name of Jesus. This week, you are favored. In the name of Jesus. And God's light will shine through you. God's love will radiate through you. God's love will be expressed through you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Go forth. You are blessed.